today's video is the next one in our series on servicing CB radio on a shoestring budget. One of the next things you need to be able to do with a CB radio is to make sure it's on frequency. And when you look at some of my repair videos, I usually show you how we adjust the frequency. Sometimes there's one crystal as a master oscillator, sometimes there's three or four, and they'll have to be done in the right sequence. To do that, you need a frequency counter. Now, the CB radio hobby market offers really left over from the American. Um, what could you really say? American accessory market. Some of these five digit frequency counters. What is the point of a five digit frequency counter? In America, for channel 19, what, what is it? 27.185. But, so that's five digits. But you need to know more decimal places to make sure the thing really is on frequency. So you need an eight-digit frequency counter. So in, in the UK, we look at 27.60125 to 27.99125. Channel 20, which we do most of the tuning on, is 27.79125. This Harrier base station is a repair and it doesn't work except on channel 9. That's not the issue we've got here. We know it works on channel 9 and so I'm going to demonstrate to you a couple of relatively cheap frequency counters. Now the you'll notice we've got that little um, power meter out and in the back of that little power meter is that dummy load I showed you how to make. The frequency counter which is on the top of this Harrier base station is relatively cheap and it, I think it's as cheap as an 8 digit mains powered frequency counter goes. I paid £88 for it including VAT and delivery. So I know it's not £20 but it's also not £500. So the trouble is it's quite slow on its count rate when we want the resolution that we want. If we turn this down to five digits, the count rate is much quicker. Now if I key up 27681, right, we've got five digits. So you'd say, oh, that's on frequency. Let's add some more digits. Now it's slowing down the count rate, key up. Oh, we're still on there. Uh, Right, next step up. 276818. You see, now we can see it's off frequency, can't we? So with five digits, it looked like it was on frequency. But in actual fact, it isn't on frequency at all because it should be 68125. And if we go up to the 10 second count, which will be an eternity, it'll be 10 seconds, you'll see the real frequency. is 68188 so it's quite a bit off frequency so with the five digit frequency counter you said yep that's on frequency but with an eight digit counter you can see it actually isn't and it could make all the difference um, all I've got there is the probe it came with which is I've just dangled in the vicinity of the um, dummy load you don't plug the back of the CB radio into a frequency counter input unless you've got a model that is made to do that now my friend Stuart, electric man, he's made quite a few little attenuator boxes to run his test instruments and I must get out the ARRL handbook and show you how to make some of those so you can plug them in but through an attenuator that you make. Now I've also got this little frequency counter here. Um, you've probably seen these around as well. I'll just probably tilt that so we can actually see it. Now the gating time on that is quite quick. If we keep the radio now, I think you can see, I can't see through the camcorder viewfinder, uh, 278162, and when the green one gets there, it'll say something similar, I've no doubt. So very quick gating time on that, there you are, 68187. So there's a slight discrepancy between the accuracy on those two. But that little Watson... I think they're only about £59 new. 
and it's not something you'd want on your test bench, whereas the one with the green display is. But it's a useful product. It's got a, a very fast gating time. So we've got the um, the eight digits that we need. Now they do another one, which I couldn't really recommend, and I'll just pause the camera. Oh no, it's here. Now that one is now the I took off the FC one thirty, which has got the extra switches and goes to one uh, goes up to three gigs, and I've put this lower in the range model, which is ten megs to thirty. Does it say? Yeah, no, it's, no, no, no. It goes to three gigs, but it just hasn't got the gating speed, and it hasn't got the sensitivity. It's still hunting around with that little aerial poked in the top. I'd really have to get much closer to the dummy load for it to give us a sensible reading. So that's not really a model I could recommend to anybody. But the FC130, that one, I could. On our test benches, the test instruments we use, the Marconi one and the um, Farnell one, they've got built-in frequency counters and they've got the fast gating speeds but then they're expensive instruments and the whole idea of this series of videos is to show you things which can be done on a tight budget. So yes you can buy frequency counters something like the one on the top I say that was brand new £88 delivered and those things come on the second hand market um, you know at less than £50 and that little Watson one I think I bought it at a uh, ham fest type of thing for about £25 but I think they're only about £59 new. So again, this is doing it on a budget. But five digits, they're no good to you. You're wasting your time. You're just not going to get the accuracy that you need to make the adjustments. You do need eight digits. The next part in this series on servicing CB radios on a shoestring will be deviation. That is the most difficult thing to do on a budget. There are very few hobby deviation meters and they all end up really being commercial ones that are elderly and uh, a couple of weeks ago I bought a 1961 Hewlett Packard valve one off eBay for £20 working and that will be what we're going to look at at the next video so we'll cover deviation <laughs>